YouTube, подключите, пожалуйста, на Facebook уже есть, на YouTube покажите. Francisca, welcome today. And Noma. Naomi Soko. Rochelle White. Anne Ode. Tuli Mazibuko Flora Welcome everyone Are your DG Solomon Well you guys let me tell you what from the very beginning today is going to be hot It's not just going to be hot anyhow somehow it's going to be red red hot and uh, for people for people who are uh, biased and sentimental, I want to warn you from the very beginning, this is the kind of program that you don't want to attend. You might want to run for your, for your life because this topic is going to be hot. And I don't like to name names and I don't like to challenge people pos po uh, personally and publicly. But what I'm doing today, I don't want anybody to mistake it to name calling. This is not name calling at all. So what is it? Especially seeing the title of this message. The title of the message is Pastor Adeboye and the God of Mammon. Is Pastor Adeboye building a church or a financial empire? So... Adeboye and the God of Mammon is Pastor Adeboye building a church or a financial empire. Unfortunately, I cannot answer this question positively today. And I want to prove that to you. I don't want you to believe me. I want you to believe the evidence of your eyes rather than evidence of your ears. Don't believe me because I am saying it. Let's watch the evidence ourselves. And what I'm going to do today is to start with the video as usual. I'm going to show you video and I'm going to let you listen to RCCG GO by yourself and decide for yourself. Is Pastor Deboye building a church or a financial empire? Now, I must say here, that I have a deep respect for Pastor Adeboye. Anything I'm going to say today, and this whole series, is going to be a whole series that will last at least 10 messages. And these messages are not going to be because I dislike Pastor Adeboye. Let me actually tell you more than that. I have deep respect for him. Uh, both as a spiritual leader and as a person. Someone who was able to become a professor uh, one of the youngest, you know, mathematics professors of our country, of our country is today with good chance of becoming one of the youngest VC of Nigeria. So the man is smart. So even if for anything, we, we all have to respect him for his smartness and for his education and for his status. Mm -hmm. oh, but that is as an individual. But I also respect this man deeply as a spiritual leader. Any man who is able to organize a movement of millions deserves respect. So for me to say I disrespect or I don't respect Pastor Adeboye is to deny myself. I respect anybody that has evidence. I respect anybody that has proofs. And Pastor Adeboye has got them. Now it's another question. At whose expense did Pastor Adeboye get the result that he has? Not the personal ones but the result in regards to church. I would think that it is at the expense of the, of, the, of the people, ignorant people of our country. 
and that he built his empire or church, as, as some people call it. But I don't think that Pastor Adebo is building a church. I think he's building a, an empire. And he has built this empire on the back of our people and at the expense of our people. So some people will not like what I'm going to say, but if there are people who, who like to use their mind and their senses, they will see the truth in what I'm saying. And I don't want you to believe me. I want you to believe the evidence of your eyes and your ears. Not just your ears, but your eyes. <laughs> like I do. The reason I... People, people want to say... People, some people say they don't like the fact that I show video. But if I just come and talk without showing the video to prove what I'm saying in essence, then it will be more like I'm just accusing somebody of, you know, of... Uh, you know, just talking. But for you to know that I'm not just talking and this is not just my own opinion, that's why I needed to produce the video and the proofs that will show to you that these things are not coming from my mind, but that these things are what actually happened. I don't just want you to believe me. I've been trained to produce evidence. So that's what I'm producing. I'm producing empirical evidence that will help you to know that, yes, what we are saying is the truth. Um, so please let's go and share this video. Let's go and invite as many people as possible who are lovers of truth. Let's go and invite them and share the video. And I'm going to do 10 messages on, uh, on the topic, Pastor Adeboye and the God of Mammon on that various topics. And then I will jump from Adeboye to maybe Pastor Chris or maybe Matthew, one of them. I don't know which one will be the first one first. Uh, I will go to, I will do on both Adeboye and the God of Mammon. Then I, I will also do on Chris Oyakilome and the God of Mammon. I will also do on uh, Matthew and the God of Mammon and Oyedepo and the God of Mammon. So, uh, so here we are. We have finished the HMT and the HMT people, some of them are still here, but most of the HMT people have gone home. Now, here we go. Uh, we are going to, I'm going to show you the video today to prove and to, to, for you to see for your own self is Pastor Adeboye building a church or a financial empire. Here we go. Related that, ladies and gentlemen. To give you a little talk on something that I believe is very, very crucial at this moment. All we are doing meanwhile is introduction. We haven't come to talk number one. We are just introducing. And what I'm about to say, I want it put on a separate uh, CD or DVD or whatever. And uh, every parish must get a copy. Because it's very important. It is on the issue of tithes. I'm sure you said, no, 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 we are all ministers, we don't need a talk on tithes, we know everything about it, I'm not sure you do. Because if you do, you ministers to start with, will not be defaulting on your tithes. Because the Almighty God made it clear to me, many of you, Ministers don't even pay your tithes. Now that's incredible. Number two, many of you who do pay your tithes don't pay all your tithes. That's even more dangerous. Because as far as God is concerned, half of obedience is worse than disobedience. And then those of you who do pay your tithes don't teach tithing to your congregation. That is dangerous. It takes only one man with a curse on his head to get everybody else in his company into trouble. In case you don't believe me, ask Joshua and he will tell you the story of Acre. Only 
one Achan was in the army of Israel and he threw God into neutral gear. A problem came for a whole nation because of one single man who had a curse on his head. Malachi chapter 3 verse 8. Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 made it clear. Anyone who is robbing God of his tithes and offerings is under a curse. A single member of the congregation who is not paying his or her tithe puts the entire congregation in trouble. If you understand what I've just said, say amen. I didn't hear you, amen. It takes only one acre in the congregation to open the door to witches and wizards in the congregation. One fellow who will not pay his or her tithe is a danger to the rest of the congregation. <laughs> Any pastor who is pastor in a church or any minister who is pastor in a church and is not paying his tithe brings a curse on the congregation. Tell your neighbor, don't bring the rest of us into trouble. Pay your tithe. Let me make it clear to you. Anyone who claims to be a Christian and is not paying his tithe is deceiving himself. There will be no robbers in heaven. There is nothing like a born again robber. Not one. Any, any pastor who says he's a pastor and he doesn't pay his tithe, if he had ever been born again at all, he's a backslide. Hello guys, I hope you are here. That is the video. Now, by the way, you will never find this video anywhere else apart from here. This is the only place where you will find this video. You will only find this video here on DSA platform. And maybe once we finish the video. So anybody who wants to watch this or you would like to watch, you better go and invite them. Because right now the analysis will begin. The analysis will begin. So uh, so you will not see this video on the internet. This video is not on the internet. You people go and invite as many people as you know and you care about right now. So the topic of the topic, I mean the topic of the message is uh, is Pastor Adeboye building a church or a financial empire? Is this clear? Yes. Is Pastor Adeboye building a church or a financial empire? So, and of course, the general title for the, the uh, for this week, this series is Pastor Adeboye and the God of Mammon, and the topic is is Pastor Adeboye building a church or a financial empire. So here we go. Let's now let the analysis start. I've allowed you to see the video by yourself without any of my comments. No comment from me. But now my own analysis, analysis will begin.
and there we go guys let's uh hear again if a little talk on something that i believe is very very crucial at this moment all we are doing meanwhile is introduction we haven't come to talk number one we're just introducing and what i'm about to say i want it put on a separate uh, cd or dvd or whatever and uh, every parish must get a copy because it's very important stop it is on the issue of tithes stop now let's go to the note now i'm going to i want to show you i want to comment on this particular thing that we are saying we are saying now pastor the way here is underlining this topic he right he's understand he's uh let me see if i could show you what i'm reading okay so pastor the boy pastor the boy is underlining uh can i make it smaller okay pastor the boy is underlining this topic and saying saying it okay good i think it's okay it's he's saying it is an extremely important topic extremely important topic okay so why why is this topic oh, yeah extremely important topic why is this topic so extremely important is it is it about heaven that is so important is it about jesus what is so important about this topic is it about the kingdom of god is it about salvation is it about heaven what is it that is so important what is it that is so important about this topic what does pastor adebo want to tell us that he went to the extent of telling people that people must record this message specially they must record it somewhere else what is it that is so important that pastor the boy want to talk about right because he said they should put it in a separate device he said they should put the message in a separate device to him this is what everything is all about because when he, the reason why he says people should put this in a separate device it means this is what the church is all about so what is it that the church is all about money money, money. so when it, whenever they do salvation they don't say record this special go and record this somewhere else you know go and do special recording for this put it in a special place and make sure that every church gets a copy make sure that every pastor every pastor must go and tell and report to their members all these laws that is put in place and the whole thing is about money and he say you they should it should go everybody should go and tell them that it is compulsory there is no one that should do that should not show this thing in their church this is so important this there is nothing as important as this so what is that important that is pushing pastor deboye you know to do a special program and call all the pastors this is a meeting of all the pastors of rccj so what is so important that Pastor Deboy wants to talk about that is making him to make all pastors come and record it and take it back to their church, to their churches and report that this is coming personally from, from him, uh, Pastor Deboy. What is it? Money. Now, can you see why I call the message is Pastor Deboy building the you know the kingdom of god or his own personal empire is he building the church or is building his own empire let's start from the beginning we are going to start again and i want you to have a look at this video again to talk on something that i believe is very very crucial at this moment all we are doing meanwhile is introduction we haven't come to talk number one I just introduce 
And what I'm about to say, I want it put on a separate uh, CD or DVD or whatever. <laughs> and uh, every parish must get a copy because it's very important. It is on the issue of tithes. I'm sure you said, no, 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 we are all ministers, we don't need a talk on tithes, we know everything about it. I'm not sure you do. Because if you do, you ministers to start with, will not be defaulting on your tithes. Okay. Now, I want to tell you again that this is a pastor's meeting, a minister's meeting that is here. So this is a minister's meeting and pastor, this topic, this so all-important question and topic, it was it's so important that all pastors, all ministers are to be gathered together. They must be there. They must be present. Ah, what is it that's so important like that? That they must all gather together. It, it happens to be, it, it comes out to be that it is topic about money. And if you see what this man of God is talking about here, you will be scared. A rabbi, that's what they say in my language. Is that, is it true? A rabbi, is that? Yes. A rabbi? A rabbi. That means you will be scared. You will be afraid when you hear what Pastor Debo is saying about this thing. So that, that then brings out the question, what is this man of God building? Is he building the church or is he building his own empire? And um, let's uh, have a look at the notes again. So according to Pastor Deboye, this topic is so important that it has to be put in a separate device, CD. To him, this is what everything is all about. And he says... They must take the message to all parishes. Every member must be intimidated by this thing. Rabbi, they must be informed by this. Hence, my question is, is Pastor Adeboye building a church or a financial empire? Is Pastor Adeboye building a church or a financial empire? So, number six, the next point here. What is so important that Pastor Adeboye wants to put in a special device that everyone wants to put it in a special device that every parish must have it. Every parish must have. Is it about tight? That everything is all about? Is the kingdom of God now inferior to tight? So this is before the debate. Oh. This thing we are talking about has happened many years ago. This video is not fresh. It's not now. This was a video that has happened maybe 10 years ago just for you to know that God is a God of patience. God has patience with all of us. And this is not about that. Anyway, this is because God has seen this. Uh, th this is destroying the whole country. This doctrine is destroying the whole of Africa. It's destroying the whole of Nigeria. It's destroying the whole church of the world. God has had so much patience. And I'm sure that God has spoken and has tried to speak to RCCG and has spoken to Adeboye. This, is, this has been going on for so many times. Even me, God used me to go and speak to the American branch and to tell them that, hey, they need to do church differently. So for it to, and this video, they said they should, not, they should not go put it anywhere. You will not see it anywhere. You will not see it on Facebook. You will not see it, you see it on YouTube. It's a hidden secret kind of thing. Because this is what the whole ministry is all about. It's all about tight. It's all about money, unfortunately. It's all about tight. It's all about money. So... What is most crucial? Because the back, Pastor Deboe said this thing is going to talk about is the most crucial or most important according to Pastor Deboe. He said this topic is so crucial, it's the most crucial topic. So what is the most crucial topic according to Pastor Deboe? What is the most crucial topic according to RCCJ? So it means the most crucial topic now is money and tithe. 
since he wants every parish to have this message and for it to be kept specially. Now, pay attention to the faces of the pastors and their continents. We are going to see, see it now. And the heavy burden on the people as he emphasized on this tithe and offering. Let's, let's, let's have a look at the video again. You see the video again and come, have a look at the at the faces of people and at the, at the burden on them. And Pastor Debo himself doesn't seem to notice that people are sad, people are hungry. People, people have been burdened by this give, 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 give. On something that I believe is very, very crucial at this Stop. moment. Did you hear the word? Something, he wants to talk about something that is very, very crucial. You would think, what is so crucial? What is it that is so important? All we are doing, meanwhile, is introduction. We haven't come to talk number one. We are just introducing. So, so what is this talk number one? What is the number one topic in this ministry? Talk number one, what is it? You would think it's about Jesus' second coming, though. Or about how to spread, spread the kingdom of God to all the earth. Oh. Oh, topic number one. No, no, it's not about kingdom of God or anything. Or Jesus coming. All those are cover up. Topic number one is in Russian language, I would say groshi. In Ukrainian language, groshi, groshi, groshi. Dengi, dengi, dengi. <laughs> That's Russian language. That's it. <laughs> and what I'm about to say, I want it put on a separate uh, CD or DVD or whatever. Stop. You see, this thing that Pastor wants to talk about is so important, he doesn't want to risk it. He, he said, he, because he doesn't trust that these pastors will take the message one-on-one -on -one to the people. He said, record it and take the tape and go and play it to your people so that there will be no mistaking that they had it. That this is so important, every member of RCCG must get it. Beautiful. And uh, every parish. You see, stop. Must... Did you hear the way he emphasized every parish? Every parish. So, what is this important to? Is it that God wants to call daddy home? No, he's money. Only one thing is important. See, that's why I call this topic is uh, Pastor Adebo is building the kingdom of God. Is he building the church or empire? His church is personal empire. And uh, every parish must get a copy because it's very important. You see, every parish must get a copy of this important topic that Pastor wants to talk about. It is on the issue of tithes. I'm sure you said, no, no, no. We are all ministers. We don't need a talk on tithes. We know everything. You see, it's, about the, it's on the issue of tithes. Not with me say I'm. I'm not the one who put it in his mouth. I didn't say it. That is the all-important topic. It's the topic number one. It's the crucial one. <laughs> about it. I'm not sure you do. Because if you do, you ministers to start with will not be defaulting on your tithes. Stop. It's a big tragedy. You see the tragedy that is happening? That ministers are defaulting some ministers. But when you have a church like, that is so full of people like this, there will always be one or two or maybe even many that are defaulting on their tithes and offering. What tragedy is that? Is that, is that the reason why the old, the old world has to be stopped and because some pastors are defaulting on their tithe and offering and all the pastors have to be called together to, to be spoken to about not defaulting on their tithe and offering? Because the Almighty God made it clear to me, many of you ministers don't even pay your tithes. Hmm. Now that's incredible. Stop. So, now, can you now understand why I titled this topic 
you know, is Pastor Adeboye building a church or a financial empire? What is it that's so important that Pastor Adeboye wants to put in a special device that every member, every church, every parish must have a copy? Of course, money is about tight and it's all about money. Number two, many of you who do pay your tithes don't pay all your tithes. Stop. See the faces of people. Pay attention. Let's see the faces of people again. Go, go back a little bit. Let's go back a little bit, yeah. Will not be defaulting on your tithes. Because the Almighty God made it clear to me, many of you ministers don't even pay your tithes. Now that's incredible. Number two, many of you who do pay your tithes don't pay all your tithes. That's even more dangerous. Because as far as God is concerned, half of obedience is worse than disobedience. Stop. Can you feel the incredible pressure? Can you imagine you've been called from your station? And the thing, all important thing that your geo wants to talk to you about <laughs> is actually attacking them. This is actually attacking people, putting pressure on them. Guilt. Using guilt, the feeling of guilt. That you are, it's almost like saying, you are defrauding. You are robbing God. You are a thief. He will say all those things. All these words I'm saying, thief, robber, you know, a robbing God, all those things. He will still say them all. Let's keep on watching. You know, so, but he's accusing the people. He's, these are servants. These are ministers. These are his army. His, you know, lieutenants that are in place in risking their lives. You know, risking their family pleasure, I mean, for their families and welfare and, you know, suffering. And, he, and people who don't even have money, who don't have what to eat sometimes. And he's putting so much pressure on them, manipulating them and calling them, you know, names and saying, you know, yeah, they are, you know, they, they, are not, they are robbing God. They are defrauding. He's putting pressure on the people in the name of God. He's presenting God as an accuser of the brethren. Because he's accusing these people. Because even if some people are defaulting on their on their tithe and offering, I'm sure most of these people that are there are not defrauding. So why should you make all of them to sit down like that and uh, you know making them to feel as if they are failures, as if they are you know they they are failing God? So the way this is coming across, and I will let you watch it again, you will see that this doesn't present the God of love. The way this is coming across doesn't present a loving, compassionate, merciful God. It's like it's a God of penalty. It's a God of penance. It's a, it's a penance, penance God that is always demanding something from you. That is always holding stick. That, aha, you are serving me. You are bringing people to the Lord. You are building churches. You are building the kingdom of God. But the most important thing you are not doing. You are not paying your tithe. Now I caught you. The Almighty God has revealed to me that oh, despite all the things you are doing, despite all your services for me, despite all your services to the Lord, God is not happy with you. God is angry with you. And he has revealed to me that I must call you to the order because you are not paying your tithe and your, your offering. You know, let, so let's, let's, let's uh, you know, let's, Let's, you know, let's hear that something again, a little bit behind. Will not be defaulting on your tithes. Stop. Because you are... You see, you are defrauding on your tithe, which means that it's, we are talking about a God of law, a God of compulsion, a God of retribution. He's talking about a God of retribution, that... You know, a God that is not pleased by anything until you bring money. But I want to tell you guys, this is not the God of the Bible that Pastor Adeboe is representing here. He's representing here the God of Mammon. He's talking about here the God of Mammon. This is Mammon that is talking. Because, you know, God is not waiting and is dissatisfied with you because you are talking about, uh, you know, because you are talking, because 
He's not going to say he's going to eat you in the head and he's going to uh, punish you or kill you just because or you are, he's, he's angry with you just because you don't pay tight. Tight is not a compulsion thing. God is not forcing anybody to pay tight. God is, is not a law in the New Testament. In the New Testament, tight is not something that you must do or die. But the way these pastors are presenting it is that you, you have to leave, either you, if you don't pay tight, it's do or die thing. It's like you are condemned if you are not paying tight. As if no matter what you have done to serve God, it doesn't matter until you pay tight. Let's start from the very beginning and you hear how this sounds again. Give you a little talk on something that I believe is very, very crucial at this moment. All we are doing meanwhile is introduction. We haven't come to talk number one. We are just introducing. And what I'm about to say, I want it put on a separate uh, CD or DVD or whatever. And uh, every parish must get a copy. Because it's very important. It is on the issue of tithes. I'm sure you said, no, 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 we are all ministers, we don't need a talk on tithes, we know everything about it. I'm not sure you do. Because if you do, you ministers to start with, will not be defaulting on your time. Can you imagine that the first apostles, the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, are gathering the pastors under them and saying, tight, eh? You people have done so well. You have been bishop on it, so you have planted churches. You have gone everywhere. You have done everything that needed to do. But what about Jesus? Why didn't Jesus do that to the disciples? He had disciples now. Why didn't he do that to them? That, ah, you disciples, what was wrong with you? But Jesus told them, Freely have you received, freely give. Don't take anything from anybody. It's not about money. So can you imagine the first Christians that were, you know, who are, who are doing their best for God and he's saying, you know, we are gathering you together to, to rebuke you because you didn't pay tithe or you are not demanding tithe from people. So the image Pastor Adeboye is projecting here is the image of a tax inspector. He's projecting the image of a tax inspector. Monitoring if you paid in part or not at all, this makes God to be seen as a tax collector or tax inspector. Let's continue. Because the Almighty God made it clear to me, many of you ministers don't even pay your tithes. Now that's incredible. Number two, many of you who do pay your Stop. tithes. He said the God Almighty, God Almighty. Can you rewind it a little bit? Rewind it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, don't even pay your tithes. No, more, more. Tithes, we know everything about it. I'm not sure you do. Because if you do, you ministers to start with will not be defaulting on your tithes. Because the Almighty God made it clear to me, many of you ministers don't even pay your tithes. So, the Almighty God is making it clear to him. He said, can you imagine, the way people are talking about God, as if God doesn't have job, is to be revealing to many ministers that he's not paying tithes. You know, even without God, can't anybody with common sense know that in the church of millions and in the church where there are thousands and tens of thousands of pastors, there will be some of them that are not paying tithe? Is it not common sense that oh God Almighty has to come and be revealing to, to me or to you or to anybody else that God Almighty has come to reveal to me that you are not paying your tithe? Maybe it's even some of the assistants that reported or church members that reported that uh, they are not paying tithe or something. But for God to I mean, leave all the busy and all the important things in the world. <laughs> 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 
for God to be living. I mean, no, no more. Nigeria is in crisis, so God cannot come and talk about that one to come and tell us how we can come out of the crisis. <laughs> The Shibo girls, the Shibos, uh, the girls that were stolen, they are still missing. No? <laughs> a lot of things that demand revelation, real help for the country and for even CCG people. Some of them are dying of cancer. Some of them are, you know, a lot of desperate situations people are in. So God will just leave all that alone and be saying, God has come to tell me that some people don't... Uh, you. <laughs> You know, they don't pay their tithe and they don't pay their offering. So that is uh, that is the, the big problem in the hand of God now. So you must go and flog them out. You must go and uh, you know and you know and uh, no, it's too much. That is a lie on God. That is actually lying on God, telling lies on God. Really, let's go. Let's continue. Now that's incredible. Number two, many of you who do pay your tithes don't pay all your tithes. That's even more dangerous. Because as far as God is concerned, half of obedience is worse than disobedience. Stop, 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 stop. Maybe you put the, 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 the other part though. Let's hear again. Just a little bit. Go back a little bit. Yes. Because as far as God is concerned, half of obedience is worse than disobedience. No, no, more, more, more back. Yeah. You know that Don't even back. pay your tithes. Now that's incredible. Number two, many of you who do pay your tithes don't pay all your tithes. Stop. What does that mean? What does that mean? Some of you are, many of you are paying your tithes, but you don't pay all your tithes. So you are paying 9% maybe, or 8%, or maybe 7%. You are not paying all your tithes. You see, guilty conscience. This is to use guilt to kill people. This is to make people to live under condemnation. This is to actually make people to be feeling condemned and guilty already. Many of you are paying, but you are not paying all. Oh, I think what it means by all is from everything that comes to your hand. You have to pay all. Okay, yeah, I think that's what it means. You know, you don't just pay tight from your salary or something. You've got to pay from all. That means from everything that, you know, that is coming your way. So if you have not paid your school fees or your children's school fees or you have not paid for your, for your own rent, you have to pay all first. So, but but what is what Pastor Deboye says about those people who don't pay their tithe fully is it's, it's remarkable. So let's hear this again because you must pay attention to this. You ministers to start with will not be defaulting on your tithes. Because the Almighty God made it clear to me, many of you ministers don't even pay your tithes. Now that's incredible. Number two, many of you who do pay your tithes don't pay all your tithes. <laughs> okay, all your tithe. That's even more dangerous. Because stop, as far stop, as God... So what Pastor Debo just said, that is even more dangerous. That is even more dangerous. So, for you to not pay your tithe is even safer, according to Pastor Deboe. You have to repeat that place again, though. Because for if you don't pay your tithe, that is horrible. But the people, the person who pays his tithe, but doesn't pay, pay on everything. He doesn't pay everything. That person is more dangerous. So for you not to pay your tithe, it's more dangerous for you not to pay that tithe than the person who is paying the tithe. <laughs> no, let's hear this debate again, though. Know? Because the Almighty God made it clear to me, many of you ministers don't even pay your tithes. Now that's incredible. Number two, many of you who do pay your tithes don't pay all your tithes. 
That's even more dangerous. No. So not to pay all your tithe is more dangerous. <laughs> not to pay all. It has to be all. So if you don't pay all your tithe, you are in more danger. Hey, I need examples here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, anybody there that could help me? Come. So anybody, two people, just come here. Stand behind. Uh -huh. Anybody, just two of you. Mm -hmm. you no, know, stand behind far so that you could see yourself. Okay. So which one of you pays tight regularly? You pay tight. But not hundred percent. <laughs> Raise your hand. You pay tight, but not hundred percent. You know, and you don't pay at all, tight. At all. At all. At all. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't pay at all. At all. Now, now you are more lucky. <laughs> because, because the one that pays, raise your hand now. Yeah. The one that pays tight, but not all, is <laughs> is even more dangerous. This is even more dangerous. You are more in more danger than the one that doesn't pay tight at all. Can you believe that? Can you believe it? Someone, inshallah. Let's hear Pastor Adibori talk about this again. Thank you. A little talk on something that I believe is very, very crucial at this moment. All we are doing, meanwhile, is introduction. We haven't come to talk number one. We are just introducing. And what I'm about to say, I want it put on a separate uh, CD or DVD or whatever. And uh, every parish must get a copy. Because it's very important. It is on the issue of tithes. I'm sure you said, no, 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 we are all ministers, we don't need a talk on tithes, we know everything about it, I'm not sure you do. Because if you do, you ministers to start with, will not be defaulting on your tithes. Because the Almighty God made it clear to me, many of you, Ministers, don't even pay your tithes. Now that's incredible. Number two, many of you who do pay your tithes, don't pay all your tithes. That's even more dangerous. Stop. Because as far as God is concerned... So you pay your tithe, but you are not paying it fully. So it means that in this, according to Pastor Deboe's theology... The, the widow and the widow's might, that the little you have, which means the little you have, you can bring. Any need, no matter how small, that one will not hold water here. First of all, you are not a widow. Number two, you have not bring all, you have not brought all. But, but little does matter in the kingdom of God. God is not looking at the side. Give anything you can. Little does matter. But in, in, according to this theology, little doesn't count. That kind of giving is not out of love because what he's telling people now is a, it's giving out of compulsion that people have to give by all means. It's because G.O. is demanding. G.O. is saying it. If you don't do it, you are going to be under a curse. You are going to be, you know, God is not going to bless you. All kind of manipulation. So that kind of giving, even if you are going to be giving that kind of church and situation, that kind of giving is not out of love. Therefore, People are not under love, but they are under obligation. They are under guilt. They are under condemnation. So that is what is happening. When people are not, when people are, you know, being forced to do something for God, God cannot accept that sacrifice as sacrifice offering of God. God is uh, is not pleased with that kind of sacrifice because God is only pleased with cheerful givers. You must be a cheerful giver to, to please God. Okay, let's uh, continue. Half of obedience is worse than disobedience. 
And then those of you who do pay your tithes, don't teach tithing to your congregation. That is dangerous. It takes only one man with a curse on his head to get everybody else in his company into trouble. Stop, 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 stop. stop. This is scandalous. Scandalous. <laughs> Let's repeat it. Go back a little bit. Let's hear again. To your congregation. Dangerous. Because as far as God is concerned, half of obedience is worse than disobedience. Okay, stop. So this is talking about the fact that you give partly and you don't give fully your tithe and offering. So half obedience is worse than disobedience. So the guy who doesn't pay tithe at all is... <laughs> the guy who doesn't pay tithe at all is much better than the one who pays, but not all. Because half obedience is worse than disobedience. Huh. That kind of doctrine, where is that coming from? Is that that's non biblical? And you could see the whole idea is, is just to find a way to extract money from the people. This is a technique, this is a strategy of extracting money by saying that if you pay but you don't pay fully, then you are, you know, you uh, you are not, you know, you, you have to pay fully. It's, be, it's, even, it's, be, it's even better for you not to pay at all. And people don't want to withhold paying. People know they have to pay because, you know, they want to please God. So for you not to pay from all, it means you are worse than the one who doesn't pay at all. It's all technique and strategy of extracting money from people. So this strategy is to make sure everybody gives all their tight. All their tight. So yeah, let's continue. And then those of you who do pay your tithes, don't teach tithing to your congregation. That is dangerous. Stop, stop, stop. Hey, she naked. So even if you pay tight, where are the my two helpers? Where are my pastors? Two pastors, help us. Come down. Come stand. Eh? Yeah, yeah, criminals. What, who was the criminal number one? Okay, you, you are the one who didn't pay tight at all. Yes, I Show your face that. now. Where are you hiding your mother by head? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so you are the one who don't pay tight at all. Yes. But this one paid tight, but not fully, not on everything fully. So he is worse than you who don't pay because he is obedient but half. And half disobedience, half obedience, according to Pastor the boy, is worse than disobedience. Now we go to the next stage. So because we have three stages. The first stage is the pastors who defraud on their tithe and they don't pay tithe at all. Now, the second stage are the ones who pay tithe, but they don't pay fully from everything. Now, the third one are two pastors. So who is the pastor that uh, doesn't pay tithe at all? You are still the one, I yes. guess. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you are, you are not afraid no. of not paying tithe at all. Okay, you are the pastor who doesn't pay tithe at all. <laughs> and now, but you, you pay tithe, but you don't teach your congregation. You don't teach them to pay tithe. So the Bible, well, what does the man of God say? You didn't hear, hey, like here yeah, now. Have you, can you play it or reverse it? Or, let's pray. You, because you are two pastors. Yes. Okay. One, you pay, you are paying your tithe quite all right. Quite. But you are not regularly. He is paying. He's paying yes. yes. But he's not teaching. Yes. It's the congregation that they too must pay. Now let's hear his, his, uh, his uh, judgment. Yeah, yeah, the judgment that is coming upon him. <laughs> the predicament that you have. So have you rewound it? Okay, let's hear now. And then those of you who do pay your tithes, don't teach tithing to your congregation. That is dangerous. Okay, you see? Big sin. <laughs> so the fact that you pay tight, that is already, you said you pay tight, you do everything good. But even though you pay tight, eh, but the fact that you don't teach, eh, is that my, something? you don't teach that tight to your congregation makes you to come under danger. 
So you are under danger now. Even though you pay your tithe, you do everything right. You pay your tithe, you do everything all right, but because you don't teach your congregation, you come under danger. It becomes dangerous to you. You are now pay tight, but because you pay tight, but you don't teach it to your people. You don't teach tight to your people. So you are in danger. Don't teach tight to your people. You are in danger. So <laughs> let's hear this again. Let's go, go, go back. Go, go start from the beginning. Let's hear. Something that I believe is very, very crucial at this moment. We haven't come to talk number one. We're just introducing. And what I'm about to say, I want to put on a separate uh, CD or DVD or whatever. And uh, every parish must get a copy. Because it's very important. It is on the issue of tithes. I'm sure you said, no, 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 we are all ministers, we don't need a talk on tithes, we know everything about it. I'm not sure you do. Because if you do, you ministers to start with, will not be defaulting on your tithes. Because the Almighty God be declared to me, many of you ministers don't even pay your tithes. Now that's incredible. Number two, many of you who do pay your tithes don't pay all your tithes. That's even more dangerous. Because as far as God is concerned, half of obedience is worse than disobedience. And then those of you who do pay your tithes don't teach tithing to your congregation. That is dangerous. It takes only one man with a curse on his head to get everybody else in his company into trouble. In case you don't believe me, ask Joshua and he will tell you the story of Acre. Only one Acre was in the army of Israel and he threw God into neutral gear. A problem came for a whole nation because of one single man who had a curse on his head. Malachi chapter 3 verse 8. Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 made it clear. Anyone who is robbing God of his tithes and offerings is under a curse. Okay, let's let's go back. A single member of the congregation yeah. at this moment. All we are doing meanwhile is introduction. We haven't come to top number one. We're just introducing. And what I'm about to say, I want it put on a separate uh, CD or DVD or whatever and uh, every parish must get a copy because it's very important. It is on the issue of tithes. I'm sure you said, no, 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 we are all ministers, we don't need a talk on tithes, we know everything about it. I'm not sure you do. Because if you do, you 
ministers to start with will not be defaulting on your tithes. Because the Almighty God be declared to me, many of you ministers don't even pay your tithes. Now that's incredible. Number two, many of you who do pay your tithes don't pay all your tithes. That's even more dangerous. Because as far as God is concerned, half of obedience is worse than disobedience. And then those of you who do pay your tithes don't teach tithing to your congregation. That is dangerous. It takes only one man with a curse on his head to get everybody else in his company into trouble. Nope. <laughs> Wow. Can you believe that? So, Pastor Deboe basically is saying, if you have a church and you are a pastor and one person, let's say you have a church of 1,000 people or 500 people or 200 people, but if one person doesn't pay tight in your congregation, that your congregation is under a curse. So you are, you are caused, even though you are serving God, even though you are doing your best, you are paying your tithe, you are doing everything right. But just because there is one person, I think people will not believe this though, just reverse it a little bit. I want you to hear it as many times as possible. Just because that one person is not paying tithe, you didn't make, but you see what is happening here. Pastor Adeboye gathered all these people pastors from all over the world, all over Nigeria, and he's telling them you must make every one of your members to pay tight. If you, one of your members doesn't pay tight, it means you are under a curse. Your church is under a curse. Your church is under a curse. You are under a curse. Everybody in that congregation is under a curse just because one person, you didn't monitor it, that one person they has not paid his tithe. People are saying we should play the video again because we have to pay the play the video again for you to see. You know, it's almost unbelievable that if one person in your church does not pay tithe, not just you, pastor, is under a curse, but the whole church is under a curse. Every member of the church who are paying their tithe regularly, all of them are under a curse, and you, the pastor, who didn't teach your church, who left it, that who missed one member who didn't pay is under a curse too. And the whole church and everybody else is under a curse. What is that? And you want me to keep quiet? And you want me to keep quiet after this? You want me to keep quiet? This is not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the God of Mammon. This is not the gospel. This is not the Bible. This is manipulation. And it's not just that I shouldn't keep quiet. None of you should keep quiet. All of us should shout and scream out loud about these kind of things. Like I said in the beginning, I respect Pastor Deboe. I respect him dearly. Uh, he has hosted me in his house before. I've been in his house not once, several times. He has hosted me in his church, in a, what do you call, camp, uh, redemption camp. I've ministered there three times. You know, so I respect him. I love him. But I shouldn't allow the fear of man or the love for man to block me from truth. So, so, so my allegiance should be now to Pastor Adeboye and other geos rather than to God Almighty. No, I would rather tell the truth and tell people that this is not right than keep quiet and say, oh, I don't want Pastor Adeboye to be angry at me. Because people are saying we should repeat it. Let's repeat that part again. It takes only one man with a curse no, on his head that to, to your congregation. No, the, 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 that is dangerous. Yeah. And then those of you who do pay your tithes 
don't teach tithing to your congregation. That is dangerous. It takes only one man with a curse on his head to get everybody else in his company into trouble. In case you don't believe me, ask Joshua and he will tell you the story of Acre. Only one Acre was in the army of Israel and he threw God into neutral gear. A problem came for a whole nation because of one single man who had a curse on his head. Malachi chapter 3. Okay. So according to Pastor Adeboye, if one person in the church doesn't pay tithe, all other church members are cursed, and he got a scripture for it. And the scripture is the example of Achan in the Bible. That that, that example of Achan means because Achan was a sinner that the whole of Israel were, were cursed. But that was a specific situation when God had warned them not to keep anything from the wall. God had warned them that don't keep anything from the, from the loot of the wall. Displaced everyone and he warned them and he even asked, is anybody keeping, don't keep this, no, you know, you know, give away anything, everything, don't, don't keep them. So the, this was a specific situation when God had given a prior instruction. But here, now, Pastor Debo is going to use that and say, you remember the story. And in my country, people always say, oh, but he's quoting the scripture. Now it's true. I can't brought cause to the congregation. No. It's true. It is biblical. It is biblical. But they don't look at situation and how to apply the scriptures. You don't uh, use that scripture to say everybody in the congregation will be cursed just because one person there doesn't pay tithe. If that is the logic, if we could use that logic, then the truth, then you have to say, if one sinner, if there is one sinner, one unclean person in the church, then all church must be under a curse. Because one sinner is there, that is a sinner, then everybody in the church will be a curse. Then it means we are all cursed, because in every church there is a sinner. In fact, all of us are sinners, including Adeboe, including myself, including everybody. So it means that we are all under a curse, because we are in the body of Christ. Then he also says that if one person doesn't pay his tithe in the church, then the whole church is cursed. If that is the case, do you think that in your own church there is no one person who doesn't, who doesn't pay tithe? Of course, in every church we'll find one person who doesn't pay tithe. In every single church in this world, eh, there are at least one. Maybe ten. So, you believe, so in your church, if there are ten people who don't pay tithe, you remember the amount of curse that you have? The amount of curses... <laughs> that are coming upon you are enormous. So can you imagine if there is one person who doesn't pay tight in your church? You and all your members who pay tight regularly are under a curse. Ah, 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 ah. The Bible says that, you know, nobody, you know, the father will not answer for the sin of the, the son and the son will not answer for the sin of the father. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver and, you know, that the soul that sins shall die. It is only the, sin, the soul that sins that die, that will die. You know, everybody will not die just because one person doesn't pay tight. In. I don't even know the person. He's not even my family member. I just happen to go into the same building that is called church with him. What is my fault? Why should all the innocent people die? But and then using that example of Hekan as as the justification is manipulation of the Bible, and this is what these our GOs have been doing all along. They manipulate the scriptures, you know, quoting Bible out of context, saying that you know, you know, using that kind of example is out of the context. It's not biblical. You don't preach like that. And all, almost all the teachings of these are pastors and Jews are like that. They just come from the Old Testament to justify anything they want to say. And that is destructing the image of God and the Bible. 
I mean, I'm putting fear in people. If, okay, if that were the truth, everybody would be under a curse today. If that were the truth, everybody in the whole world would be cursed. Because in every church, you'll find at least one person who is not paying time. Everybody will be under a curse. Just rewind a little bit. Let's hear that part again. A man with a curse on his head. It takes only one man with a curse on his head to get everybody else in his company into trouble. In case you don't believe me, ask Joshua and he will tell you the story of Ica. Only one Achan was in the army of Israel, and he threw God into neutral gear. A problem came for a whole nation because of one single man who had a curse on his head. <laughs> so, what the day? What another danger of this? Another danger of this, apart from the fact that he's manipulative, another danger is the fact that, how do I say? But because these pastors who are following Pastor Deboye, they believe him so much that now they will dedicate themselves to doing what he has said, that everybody must pay the tithe because they don't want to be under a curse. Since they don't want to be under a curse, fear is under upon them. They make sure everybody pays tithe. So corrupt people can come to that church. And the co corrupt money of corrupt politicians will be flowing into that church because everybody has been giving carte blanche. Everybody has been giving carte blanche, carte blanche or what do you call it? Right. Carte blanche, eh? well, open shake, yes. Open shake, carte blanche. Everybody has been giving open shake so, you know, to, you must pay tithe. That's the thing. So, tithe now is more important and more significant than the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Tithe is more important than how you live, you know, your lifestyle. Tithe is more important than, um, than your work with God, than your knowledge of God. Tithe is more important than anything, than the death of, of Christ on the cross, than the blood of Jesus. Because Jesus had died for us on the cross and he has taken our, our curses on himself. But now, he is now saying you have curse. Curse is on you because, or in the congregation, just because one member of the church didn't pay. So when one member of the church didn't pay, I am now cursed. So what did Jesus die for then? If his death cannot protect me from the sin of somebody else I don't even know. If his blood cannot protect me. So what is the essence of his own blood, in fact? What is even the essence of me going to church in the first place? If I would just... If, because when I was in my home, I was not a member... I was not having anything connected with that guy who would not pay time. I was not connected with anybody that would bring cause upon me. I was safe in my own house by myself alone. So just the fact that I went to church by itself is making me disadvantaged. Because it's now making me to be in the community of people who, do, who want some person who didn't pay tithe. Now, because I joined that church, I now receive costs on myself. I now become a partaker of the cost just because I go to church. We have somebody by accident didn't pay his own tithe. Or by intention, didn't pay his tithe. So, what is the blood of Jesus doing for me? What is the death of Christ doing for me? What is Christ saying that he went to the cross and died and is, you know, and carried our crosses, everyone that hangs on the tree? What is that death, you know, of hanging on the tree? What is the significance of it? If one person like Achan just came, he came to church and joined and he didn't pay, and now I am caused, what is the benefit of that death on the cross? You tell me about it. So let's go back a little bit because you must hear that thing again so that you think, don't say that I'm putting word in Pastor Adeboye's mouth. It takes only one man with a curse on his head to get everybody else 
in his company into trouble. Stop. Oh. It means every church in the world is caused. Oh. <laughs> every church, every church member is caused. It means that even Bartolomeo himself is under a curse. Oh. Because there are some people in his church who have not paid tithe. Me, I know that one. He said it, it, you, it means that if, if, if you are the pastor, he is also the pastor now. It means he's under the curse too. Because there are people in that church who are also not, you know, who have not paid their tithe sometimes. Let's go. In case you don't believe me, ask Joshua and he will tell you the story of Acre. Only one Achan was in the army of Israel and he threw God into neutral gear. A problem came for a whole nation <laughs> because of one single man who had a curse on his head. Malachi chapter 3, verse 8. Stop. Malachi. Pastor, Pastor Derek Schneider is watching. And Derek Schneider is saying that, would, that kind of attitude and preaching will motivate us, church members, to stone some other church members we suspect. That I'm not. Because, because of you, I will not come on that course now. <laughs> You begin to suspect people who maybe this one has not paid his title. Ah, because of you, cause will not come up of you. <laughs> we'll begin to wish out wish out people who have not paid their tithe. I will begin to look at the way to kill them or to stone them or to destroy them because we don't want cause to come upon us. Hmm. After three verse it made it clear. Anyone who is robbing God. Of his tithes. So, so, see, see the face of people. See the sadness. The people are having weight on them. You know, the weight is on them. The, the, the suffering. The, the people are already poor. People are already desperate. They are already miserable. And now they are putting more heavy load upon them. See what is happening to these people. Let's see. Single man who had a curse on his head. Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 made it clear Anyone who is robbing God So look at the face of, of the people time. People are being oppressed now People and they cannot even think that the man is wrong They will not even assume that the man is wrong They, they I mean that is what happens to a society that refuses to think. That is what happens to a society where there is no critical thinking. Where there is no critical thinking, the society goes into captivity. And these old people and our old nation is going into captivity because our people are refusing to think. Because then corruption is widespread. Because everybody just wants to pay tight. People will even go and steal to pay tight. And it means that the church doesn't care where the source of the money is coming from. As long as you pay tight, now you are free. Everybody is free. No cause. Now, Ma Pastor is quoting Malachi 3, you know, 8. That you don't rob God. But the, that scripture is not talking about, you know, ordinary people robbing God. It's talking about pastors who are using the stuff that were meant for the widows, for the poor, for the strangers, and for the or fatherless, the things that are meant for them, when somebody is taking it, it means he's robbing God. And that is what the pastors were doing. That's what the priests were doing. The priests were taking the things that were meant for the poor. They were using it for themselves. That's, they are the ones robbing God. And that is actually what the Nigerian pastors are doing now, including Pastor, Pastor Adebo himself. Because right now, what we are doing is that the money, the tithe and offering that was supposed to have been used like in the New Testament when distributed and used to take care of the needs of the members and of all people in need around, they are not being used for that now. The pastors are the ones using it to build their own empire and their own... Those are the ones who are caused. So that scripture is actually against 
Pastor Debo himself, and people like that who are taking tithe and offering from people and using it not to take care of the most miserable, not to take care of the most, you know, the most wretched of the church members, but are using the money to build empires and their names and something. They are the ones who are caused. That is what that scripture is talking about. But now he's using this, and like all, and all, all other preachers who are using it, to scare people and to make people believe that they are caused. How can you be a good pastor and be telling people that, you know, making sure that they are caused and, you know, and making them to believe that they are caused? Let's keep on going. And offerings is under a curse. A single member of the congregation a curse on his head. Malachi chapter 3 verse 8. Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 made it clear. Anyone who is robbing God of his tithes and offerings is under a curse. A single member of the congregation who is not paying his or her tithe puts the entire congregation in trouble. If you understand what I've just said, say amen. I didn't hear you, amen. It takes only one acre in the congregation. Stop. See the eyes of people. People are hungry. People are desperate. People are living on one dollar or two dollars a, a you know a day. The Nigeria has become the poorest country in the world, and you are still taking all from them. This is sad. I'm telling them, you know, frightening them, throwing fear at them, that they are under a curse. To open the door to witches and wizards in stop, the stop, 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 stop. A single con a single what did you hear that? What Pastor Debo is saying that one single member of the church who doesn't pay his tithe. Uh, will not just bring curse to the whole church, to every member, but it will also open the door for witches and wizards. Witches and wizards to come and devour and torment all of you. Not the person who is, didn't pay his tithe and offering, but all of you who are paying your tithe and offering, who are faithful, the, the person had opened the door for witches and wizards. What is witches and wizards? Because somebody didn't pay tithe. Ah. Because of tithes and offering, we open door for wishes and wizard to church to come and kill people to come and torment people. I'm sure people will not believe it. You have to hear it again. Let's hear it again. Chapter three, verse eight, made it clear. Anyone who is robbing God of his tithes and offerings. Is under a curse. A single member of the congregation who is not paying his or her tithe puts the entire congregation in trouble. If you understand what I've just said, say amen. I didn't hear you, amen. It takes only one acre in a congregation to open the door to witches and wizards in the congregation. So, according to Pastor Adeboye, if one person is not paying tight, that person will expose the church to witches and wizards. Wow, this is a faulty, faulty. This is a faulty, faulty doctrine. And is geared towards generating fear in people. This is to make sure that money keep coming into the church. So that there will be no stop in the inflow 
of the church. It's all about money. And that's why I tell, talk, I recall the message. Is Pastor Adeboye building the church or his own financial empire? And it is clear that he's building financial empire because this is just out of hand. This is just too much. He has used everything possible to scare these poor people. He has used, you know, wishes and wizard. He has used Akan. He has used uh, curse that you are cursed. He has used everything. He has said you are cursed if you are not giving. He has used all kind of scare tactic to manipulate and to batter these people. So if you are not paying tight, you will bring witches and wizards. Then it means that the death of Jesus means nothing. The blood of Jesus means nothing. The cross of Christ means nothing. It means you cannot be protected. Just because somebody didn't pay tight. Witches and wizards will come and devour you and finish you up in your own church. So, but what is, what is Pastor who? Why should you be using witches and wizards to scare members of the church who have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus? This is just all an attempt to put a heavy load on the people. It's an attempt to put make people be so scared that you will surrender yourself, your will, your power, your freedom to them. You will be enslaved totally. And you will now be the one to be the evangelist of tithe and offering. You will now be the one to be going to tell people and beg them and say, ah, pay tithe, pay offering. Oh, ah, I don't want cause to come upon my church. Oh, I don't want cause to come upon me. Oh. That is uh, absolute ludicrous. And he's also using that tithe and offering, I mean, that Malachi, and say that robbers, we have to rewind it and say from that you know, Malachi. Because Pastor Deboe is equating somebody who is not paying tithe and offering to a robber. That these people are robbers. So, public, so uh, uh, robbers, you live it right, you do just because you miss your tithe and offering, you are as bad as an armed robber. Ah, oh dear. Let's hear, please. It make it clear. Anyone who is robbing God of his tithes and offerings is under a curse. A single member of the congregation who is not paying his or her tithe puts the entire congregation in trouble. You see, I don't believe that. I don't believe that Pastor Deboye here is talking because he's, a, he's an educated man. He's a man with common sense. I believe that this is the spirit of mammon talking. This is the spirit of mammon. This is the spirit of money. This is all about money. This is all about... This, this is... Um, I mean, what, what kind of... What could push somebody to this level of manipulation? What? Love for God? No. If you love God, you will have compassion upon people. If you love God, you will not use fear to destroy them like this. If you love God, you will not be using wishes and wisdom to scare them. If you love God, you will not be using fear and curses to, you know, to, 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 cover, to cover them. To covet them. You will not use, you know, all these horrible things to prophesy to them. That is absolutely horrible. It's absolutely horrible. Let's continue. If you understand what I've just said, say amen. amen. I didn't hear you, amen. amen. It takes only one acre in the congregation to open the door to witches and wizards in the congregation. One fellow who will not pay his or her tithe is a danger to the rest of the congregation. <laughs> Any pastor who is pastor in a church or any minister who is pastor in a church 
and is not paying his tithe <laughs> brings a curse on the congregation. It's no, that's another level. <laughs> That is another word there. So if any member doesn't pay tithe and offering, the person is bringing a curse to the church. That's a member. So all of us are cursed because in every church there is somebody who doesn't pay tithe and offering. Now, if a pastor too doesn't pay tithe and offering in default, it means he brings curse upon the church. So if there are pastors in, in, uh, in uh, Redeem who don't pay tithe, it means he has brought curse upon all members of the redeemed. All redeemed members are now cursed because one pastor in that church doesn't pay tithe and offering. No, it's, it's, it, is, it is too much. Tell your neighbor, don't bring the rest of us into trouble. Pay your tithe. Stop. Look at the manipulative tactics. Look at the manipulative tactics. These people are so weary already of these doctrines. And you want me to keep quiet? These people are being raped in the broad daylight. These people are being oppressed. These people are being killed morally and spiritually. I want somebody to, 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 to keep quiet after this? No, it's not real. Let's go back again here. Us on the congregation. Tell your neighbor, don't bring the rest of us into trouble. Pay your tight. Let me make it clear to you. Anyone who claims to be a Christian and is not paying his tithe is deceiving himself. Stop. So anyone who claims to be a Christian, so if you say you are a Christian now and you don't pay your tithe, you are not a Christian. You are deceiving yourself. So the death of Jesus Christ doesn't mean anything. So Salvation doesn't matter anymore. It's, salvation is now is now true tight. So if you say you are a Christian and you don't pay tight, you are deceiving yourself. You are not born again. You are not a Christian. So is it tight that determines who is a Christian now? Let's hear that part again, please. Let me make it clear to you. Anyone who claims to be a Christian and is not paying his tithe is deceiving himself. There will be no robbers in heaven. There is nothing like a born again robber. Stop. Not one. So, somebody who doesn't pay the tithe and offering is a robber. Born the gay robber is a robber, you know, I'm robber just because he doesn't pay his tithe and offering. And he's not going to heaven because he doesn't pay tithe. You are not going to heaven. Okay, go ahead. Tell any pastor who says he's a pastor and he doesn't pay his tithe, if he had ever been born again at all, he's a backslider. So, oh. <laughs> so, any pastor, let's go back again. Any pastor who said he is born again, hey, any pastor who said he's born again, and he either he's backsliding or he's not born again. So, no, nobody is born again if he's not paying tithes. So, born again, Chris said, if you are not paying tithes, you are not born again, or you are backsliding, or you are going to hell. Let's, let's hear those parts, not just the pastor earlier, a little bit. I want to give you a little talk no. 
and something that any pastor who is pastor in a church or any minister who is pastor in a church and is not paying his tithe brings a curse on the congregation. Tell your neighbor. So if a pastor is not don't paying tithe, the rest of us into trouble. If a member is not paying tithe, it's bringing costs on the congregation. If a pastor is not paying tithe, they're bringing costs. Everything is cost, 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 cost. It's just to frighten people. Pay your tithe. Let me make it clear to you. Anyone who claims to be a Christian and is not paying his tithe is deceiving himself. There will be no robbers in heaven. There is nothing like a born again robber. Not one. So if people are born again any Christians, tra- any pastor who says So if somebody is a born again Christian and he doesn't have a job or he cannot afford to pay tithe, he's not going to heaven. Hmm, okay. He's a pastor and he doesn't pay his tithe. If he had ever been born again at all, he's a backslide. Okay. So you had everything. According to Pastor Deboye, you won't go to heaven if you don't pay your tithe. That will be the message of tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm going to be showing you a video where Pastor Deboye is saying you will not go to heaven if you don't pay your tithe. But today, I want to show you the, some, some statistics, some information about the embassy, about the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And that will prove to you that this is just... No, post that my crown. Yes, it's said that some. Okay. I will prove to you that this all is being done for money. This whole ministry is now about money. You know, Mammon has hijacked the church in Nigeria, including the redeemed Christian Church of God, unfortunately. It is now, these people are now serving the God of Mammon. And I'm going to, I'm going to prove that. I got a letter from some people where they, proved, where they gave me this information. And uh, I cannot answer for the absolute correctness of everything but many many members or former members of uh, rccg confirm that this is the situation that this is true that this is what is happening so somebody said for example when go is having his birthday for example he had 75 he was 70 years old recently every church had to donate money donate not invest but donate and the senior pastors have to pay £1,000 each. Or $1,000 if you are in America. Then assistant pastors have to pay £500 each. Deacon, deacons and deaconesses have to pay £150 each. Ordained ministers have to pay $100 each. Ordinary members have to pay £50 each. And if they have over 5 million members, <laughs> I wonder, is Geo taking all the money to heaven? Because that money alone is enough to change Nigeria. I am here, sitting down here, I'm, you know, like in, like in seclusion, in prison in Ukraine. I cannot even go to assess all the money that I have. You know, I'm dreaming, I'm praying that God should give me opportunity to go to Nigeria so that I will be able to go and do what I need to do. I will be able to, ask, I will be able to do what I need to go and do. But these people have the money and they are living that Nigeria. We don't even see it. Nigeria is getting worse. You don't even see the difference. You don't even see that there is such money in Nigeria. And this, this amount of money is just the England one. No? This is just the information from England. And this, is, this kind of offering is coming from Nigeria from all over the world. I mean, that money can change Nigeria. So what are we doing when if we don't even see that difference in the country? Okay. Then 70% of the tithe of every church goes to the headquarters. 
70% of tithe of every church goes to headquarters, to the headquarters. 30% remains with the local church. Only 30%. So how can the local churches change their environment? How can they change the country where they are in? How can they improve the lives of their members if 70% is going to Africa and only 30% is remaining for pastors to, not, to use? Even that 30% might not even be enough to pay for their rent. You know, so what is happening? If all that money is going to Nigeria, why are we not seeing the change in the country? Apart from tithe and offering, these naive church members still have to pay for first, up, first fruit. They call something first fruit. I got a letter from a dear pastor who was a pastor also there and was saying this, that all, all the first fruit every January has to go to, to, the, to the big man, to, to Pastor Deboye himself. All the first fruit offering every year. Then Thanksgiving offering every first Sunday of the month has to go to Nigeria. Can you believe what's happening? This is, uh, Jesus, I don't know, I didn't know these things, but these are church members of Redeemed that are now there or that were there that are saying this thing. I've never been Redeemed, I don't know, but it's coming from so many people, so many people are confirming this, that it's, it's, just, it's just unbelievable. Then, they also, they, but the pure, poor church members still have to pay more. And, it, you, know, it's, you know, you see here now, Africa, they have to pay offering for African uh, mission offering. They have to pay pastor appreciation offering uh, every once a year. They have to pay uh, the local pastor's birthday whenever he has his birthday or the geo's birthday. Uh, members have to pay also for pastor's wedding anniversary. You know, they have to pay for convention offering for those in Nigeria. They have to pay building up donation. They have to pay covenant partner seed ranging from group one to seven, and everyone in that group must pay money ranging from one thousand or ten thousand to fifty thousand. And this is not just in redeemed. And I'm still going to talk. I'm not just going to talk about redeemed. I'm going to talk about other ministries also. I'm going. I'm going to talk about. Uh, I'm going to talk about. You know. I'm going to do a series. Finish this series on. Uh, on you no know, redeem on not redeem but on Pastor Deboye and then I'm going to do another series. Uh, I'm going to do another series on after this one. It's going to be ten messages for this series. Then after that, I'm going to do another series on um, you know maybe yeah. I'm going to do on many pastors uh, on many that's Pastor Deboye, Pastor Chris, Pastor Matthew, Pastor Oyedepo. We're going to do 10, 10 series on them. And I'm going to show you the videos for you to see that it is not a makeup something. It's not because of hatred or dislike. This is just uh, what is happening. So tomorrow, I'm going to show you a video where Pastor Deborah said, if you don't pay your tithe, you will not go to heaven. And this is not what somebody said. This is what Pas this is Pastor Deborah himself saying this in a video. You will go to hell if you will not pay your tithe. So uh, this is uh, a serious thing. And I think uh, I'm going to open the call now, the line for calls. So if you want to call to contribute to the program, only if you want to contribute to the program. If you don't want to contribute to the program, any other topic, we are going to, we are going to put you down, going to drop you. But uh, if you want to contribute to the program, uh, let's, let's, uh, you, know, you can call in now. And the way to call is to go to Facebook Messenger. Facebook Messenger. Facebook Messenger, Move Agents. Look for Move Agents on Facebook Messenger. This is the kind of topic that Mayowa likes. I think Mayowa will take the topic up after me and do a thorough job on it. <laughs> this is the kind of topic she likes. So anyway, we are going to, uh, you know, open the calls now for you, anybody that wants to call. And the way to call is to go to Facebook Messenger if you want to contribute or comment. Facebook Messenger, Facebook Messenger, look for Move Agents. Facebook Messenger, look for Move Agents. Move Agents. One word, Move agent, agent. And then you could say you want to call, you could write to us. You know, now we have resumed our, we have finished the HMT. The HMT finished. And now we have resumed, we have resumed now our daily broadcast. So from today, we are going to be having daily broadcast every day. 
So, uh, yeah, we want to hear your, your contributions. We want to hear what you have to say about this message today. And um, we want to hear your contribution today. And let's hear what you know, what you would like to say about this message. The way to go, to, just go to, it's not WhatsApp. We are not using WhatsApp. We are using uh, Facebook Messenger. So go to Facebook Messenger and look for Move Agents. Move Agents. Okay, we have a caller here right now. Hello? Can you hear me, sir? Yes. Who is calling? Uh, that's Raphael? Yes. Can you hear me, sir? Very well. Beautiful. I am really, I am happy that people's eyes are being opened to this one now. I I came from ROCCG. Okay. I, I am an eyewitness account of ROCCG, of all this coaching that the uh, Pastor Deboye coached us to do all these things. I want to give account of what happened when I was in Gibraltar. Yeah, we're hearing you. Yeah, the the the, the minister in charge of missions. The minister in charge of missions, his name is Pastor Brown Oyiso. When he came to Gibraltar, when I, I started the parish of Gibraltar, I, I, he came for the inauguration. You know, they, they have been asking me about the offerings, about the offerings. The offering is too small that you are getting. The tithe, preach tight. Tell them about tight. You need to tell them we are spending money. We are spending money about this mission. We are sending you money every month. So you need to collect tight from them. So when he came and after his ministration, he preached about tight, and the people came and gave. You know, the white men that came for the inauguration, they gave money. And the money that was realized that day was more than the money I was realizing. So he was like, can't you see that the people are giving and you are telling us that they don't give? You are telling us they don't give? Look at what I realized. They realized almost 500 pounds in a single service. He said, no, you are not teaching them. You are not telling them about it. You need to preach about it. You know, tell them, preach. And do you know that the money that was collected in that particular service, he took all the money. He said, I should put it in an envelope. He took it. He said, we are going to take it to the G.O. This one, we are going to give it to him. That is the seed that is coming from Gibraltar. Wow. Yes, I'm telling you that that is the effect, that this is exactly what is happening in ROCCG because the pastors are being taught to teach the people about tithing. They are more concerned about tithing. They are not. He didn't tell me on how I should win the souls to Christ or how I should make them have a closer work with God. The only thing he was concerned about is the money. He was telling me how he he was he, he, the, the ticket he bought. He bought a his first class ticket. Do you know how much I spent? I spent almost one point something million to, 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 to come to this place. You think it's more, it's more money? This is the money that even market women are contributing. They even know that the money is coming from market women, poor people. They know. Yeah, that my they mom. don't care. All my that is concern that concern them is let the money come. My mom has I judge. Tell me that this message is going on. We are going to continue to share this this particular issue, this particular series is going to open the eyes of so many people. We will continue to share it until they will realize that these people are not after the souls of men. They are not after the poor. All that is that concerns them, all they are interested in is how to get money, how to increase the empire of uh, Pastor E. A. Deboye, how to maintain their fleet of jets, how to make themselves rich. They don't care about the poor. They don't care about the people that are suffering in that ministry. They don't care. All that concerns them is the money. Thank you, Pastor Sunday Adelaide. We are really happy about what God is using you to do. And we are supporting you in spreading this message. The Lord will deliver our people. Amen. Thank you so Thank you, much, sir. sir. Thank you so much. And uh, let's uh, go and get the next caller. We are going to have a next caller. But what is happening really is that, you know, Mammon, Mammon, the God of Mammon has hijacked the church. The spirit of Mammon has hijacked the church. And, and the funny thing about it is that the people who are inside it don't even know what is happening. The members of church and the pastors themselves. I'm sure Pastor Adebo himself doesn't even know and doesn't realize the, the, 
you know, the extent of this. Hello? Hello? Hello, dear. Good evening, sir. Abishola, welcome. How are you today? I'm doing very well. Good to hear your I, voice I, uh, after so long time. <laughs> yes, I've been uh, busy. And uh, yeah. are you, uh, don't you experience the shock of your life for today? Oh, DSA, more than the shock. I just, I just, first of all, I want to thank God for your life. Uh, congratulations for the successful HMT that you just rounded up. Um, uh, I was following you in the with the on um, the HMT. Though I was in and out, but most of the time I was following the teaching myself. My husband, whenever he's around, he listens. When he's not around, I just you know I just give him a kind of briefing. And uh, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for such a wonderful training you are building people. Because the truth of the matter is, DSA, what you are doing, it's beyond, I don't know what I, it's beyond imagination. And what you are doing, I mean, just looking back to what you did at the HMT, it is just that you are preparing people's hearts for a time like this. And when I came in, I went to pick my keys and I started listening to this thing. I was like, if anybody had told me this somewhere else, probably I was like, oh, where, is, where, where are the facts? Where are they? Where are your, you know, want to give me the fact of what you are saying? But seeing the video and you saying all these things, is everything just resonates with me that this is just nothing but a lie from the pit of hell. You know, I always tell people that these are three people that we lie upon. We lie upon God, we lie upon the devil, and we lie upon the Holy Spirit. But the one Adeboye did today, he was lying upon God. This is just pure lie. Because it is so clear in the scripture. All the references he was making, they are just pure lie. Because there is no one that has come to understand walking with God. You've come to understand the heart of the Father. You will never attach any importance to any material things. You never attach any importance to any, any money. The Bible says that I have loved you with an everlasting love. And with my loving kindness, I have drawn you unto myself. So who are you to now tell me that if I don't pay my tithe, I'm going to go to hell? You know, the thing is, it's just so sad in my heart, you know, uh, that people are listening to this kind of a thing. And they are hearing this exposition and they are still coming on this platform to be calling people names and to be saying all kinds of things and to be saying that all these things are not true. You know, one thing I just want to beg everybody on this platform, like a brother says something that if you know the truth and you don't, you, you, you know that this thing is the truth and you don't speak up, you are denying Jesus. I have been using this word to tell people over and over again, if you know the truth, and you choose not to speak up, that is total denial of Jesus Christ. And I look at people, I look at some people, they come on this platform, I look at their page, I can't even see anything of talking about the truth on the page. I said, where do you stand? Are you neither here or there? You have to choose where you belong. I'm not saying you want, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to castigate anybody here, but we have to let the world know that we are standing for the truth and we are standing on the truth. All these things are just pure references. Just look at all the evidences you are bringing up. These are just pure evidences that even when a blind man, a blind man that sees and he's just hearing the voice, just hearing the voice, we know that this is the truth. This is just the truth. So for all these things that is going on in Nigeria, Nigeria is at, is at the greatest state of decadence. It is so sad. And you have the, 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 the religious cabals in the, in, in the churches in Nigeria, and they are still trying to brainwash people, and the brainwashing is getting more and more day by day. But at the same time, people have, people's eyes are opening. The truth is, a lot of people are getting it. But I just look at the, the huge amount of population we have in Nigeria that people are still trying to fight this truth. Left to me, I, I don't have people that I, 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 I have to say I have lost a lot of friends. I have lost a lot of contact because they can't really, they can't, they can't understand where I'm coming from. And they can't understand who I am dealing with. This is a thing of life. 
This is the thing of life that you're going to stand before your maker. How could you tell me that if I don't pay my tithes, I'm going to end up in hellfire? Any true Christian, any true child of God that hears such a statement should pack his load and run for their life. And run for their life. This is not of God. Rather, this is they, are not saying, look at this they, are, they are rather saying that I am the one who is Antichrist. Yes, I saw all the comment, but you know, I thank I thank God for your life. Yes, you are bigger than that. You know, and I want to hold every one of us as uh, as much as we see these responses, as much as we see these these things that these people are saying, we should understand where they are coming from. Their highs, like Paul says, that their highs of understanding will be enlightened. That is all I pray for them. That they will understand, that they will understand what we are fighting. The Bible says, the Paul says that fight. The good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. If anyone, what I am holding on, DSC, I was telling somebody a few days back, what I am holding on, I'm, I am holding on eternal life. I am fighting the good fight of faith. This is one out of many fights we are fighting as Christians. We have a lot of fight that is going on. And this is just one out of many. If we cannot see that this is a fight of faith, the fight of faith is not you are fighting the devil or you are fighting uh, demons and all that. These ones are these ones, these ones are these ones are on the on the on the other hand, but these ones are the real fight of faith. We are laying hold on eternal life. For people that cannot understand these things, I just pray that the Lord will open their eyes of understanding. That is all I can pray for them. That the Lord will please open their eyes of understanding. Because the truth of matter is, I was telling somebody, I said, Chris, the churches, the building that a lot of them are going to, is going to lead a lot of people to hellfire. That is what is going to lead a lot of people to hellfire. That if people cannot come and under a teaching like this, they cannot come under a teaching like this and look at the scripture for word for word. Look at the Bible reference was making about Joshua. I should go and ask Joshua. Where am I going to see Joshua? How am I going to see Joshua to ask Joshua? You are giving me a, a reference that has nothing to do with what you are saying. The word that you are even saying is actually indicting you. It is not talking to us. It is talking to the priest. I tell Christian, why can't you just go and look at this scripture? I tell you, if I don't even read from that Malachi chapter 3, go and start from chapter 1. I will understand where that thing is coming from. We understand the whole concept of the scripture. People are not being, there is what they call uh, ammonitical hygiene. People are not being hygiene, hygienic when it comes to, you know, mis uh, interpreting the scripture. We have to be hygienic. We have to be clean. We have to be pure. We have to be clean. We have, we have to be, the, there should be an integrity when it comes to the word of God. We shouldn't just say it because it, has to, it, it, it pleases our, our, our own circumstances at that time, at that point in time. The word of God is so pure. The word of God is so true. The word of God is so clean. And the more we see, the more it comes clearer and clearer and clearer. I could see the, 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 the great exposition you were giving at that HMT. I said, if Bible study can come like this, if people can see teachings like this, I think Christianity will be better. We all come back to the act of the apostle Christianity. We will not think of what I want to gain. You want to think of what I want to give to others. You want to think of how I want to share with my fellow brethren. You want to think of how I want to care for those that I need. That is what is Christianity. This is no Christianity in Nigeria. And if, if these are the people that people are looking up to, oh my God, this is so sad. That Christianity in Nigeria has come to the greatest decadence. It is so sad in my heart. Because anytime I hear this kind of a thing, or anytime I talk with people and I could see their level of ignorance, I just pray in my heart. Even as much as you are telling them, even as much as you are telling people, they still want to argue with you. But I just pray that the Lord will open the eyes of understanding of people. People, that they will know that this is not the fight of, uh, 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 this is not a, a physical fight, this is a spiritual fight, that people should come and know God for themselves. They should leave those buildings. Those are not churches. Those are not churches. They should just get out and seek for the truth for themselves. Dear say, I just want to thank God for your life. I just want to thank you for this you are doing. And I pray, like I always tell you, that he that has begun, a good work in you will complete it 
to the him in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, dear sir. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have been great, El Saro. I will, sir. God bless. Bye. All right. Wow, 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 wow. So that's what's happening. And uh, it's horrible. I mean, it, this should be horrific and, you know, and terrifying, you know, terrible, terrifying to any sane person. Hello? Hello, good evening, dear say. Good evening, sir. Yes, this is JJ calling from Sweden. JJ, how are you, sir? I'm doing great, sir. How are you, sir? <laughs> I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying my best. Yes, yes. Uh, th thanks for the good work and uh, your best is is shaking. It's, it's resonating. Uh, people, we are getting the message. And uh, yes, so I just want to contribute to tonight's program, Dr. Sunday. Yes, sir. Um, it's a bit shocking. I didn't know it was this. If it was this bad, really. Hmm. Uh, yes, I was in Redeem Christian Church for a long time, and I remember one day we had this WhatsApp group, and uh, the pastor sent about this course something from Adeboye, and I remember challenging him about this, and I, I asked him a question. So, if I be on that course, so what's the result of what's the result of Jesus's death? Yeah. Because I'm not paying tithe. And the guy was like, you know, one can come under a course, but he couldn't establish anything. And I never stepped my, I didn't go back. So, but one thing I noticed when I'm talking with uh, the European people, uh, my European friends, yeah. one of the things that they always refer to that makes them not to go to the church is about this tithing of a thing. You know, I mean, after people have spent all their money, some even sent some money to Africa, you still tell them to come and give you 10% of everything, including gift, as if God is a God of tax. The God, God taxes us for everything he gives us. And I, 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 the, the, this thing has to be revisited. The churches have to be revisited. It has to be revisited. Another thing as well that I want to refer to is deception. From what I noticed, although you mentioned it, from what I noticed from this man, uh, Adeboye, it's not himself. Although I don't know him for like 30 years back, but it's not himself. Because if one has, if I myself have been under deception, deception before, and when you're under deception, you know yourself, you're just saying rubbish and trying to make it fine until you are out of the deception and i believe that like you said the spirit of mormon has taken over the church and they don't know what they're doing anymore they are confused and uh, they're helpless so actually people like adeboy and every other person they need help actually hmm. and actually this issue of data is talking about that if you're not to deceive yourself and you're not paying it's like saying you should come and pay for your salvation yeah. and this was the same thing that resulted to the first reformation because one of the theses uh, Martin Luther uh, uh, did develop was this thing of bringing money so that you can you can make heaven and this is the same thing as repeating itself and that's why I believe that the second reformation if there be any if I should borrow the word is it cannot be avoided and uh, like I, like you would say, revolution does start. So <laughs> we we're looking forward to the next stage. I just believe every one of us should start speaking and keep writing and keep sending the messages. Some of us may just need to be uh, what you call it innovative in our ways of uh, disseminating the information. Maybe uh, you are doing yours. We should also be doing ours. Beautiful. Thank you very much, GSA. My regards to everyone. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah, well, what do I say? Um, I think all of us should begin to speak. Silence is as bad as uh, being a perpetrator of the evil that is happening. So, so you know, so to be silent is to be a, a partaker of the evil. I think all of us have to begin to speak. We have to begin to raise our voices. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Good evening, dear sir. Good evening, sir. Who is calling from where? Who there is my name from Spain. All right, sir. Thank you, sir, for the wonderful job you are doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
just finished listening to the uh, message from uh, Criminal Deboya. <laughs> wow. Uh, I, I, I don't think you don't need to fear whether they call you Antichrist or whatever they are calling. The message is very, very clear to every somebody that you understand the gospel of Christ. Mm. So we are really in support of what you are saying and uh, we support in any way to make sure that Nigerians are liberated from this uh, prosperity, miracle, uh, trust in their people in that country. Mm. So we are in support of what you are doing. So don't fear anything, the covenant to Christ or whatever they're saying. By the time we'll be on the ground there, they will know that the message is different from the one they've been preaching starting from early 80s. Yes. That's my contribution, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you so very much. So let's thank keep you. on spreading the word. We will, we will, we will, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank Blessings. You. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, let everybody begin to talk. And that's what matters. When all of us do our part, when we all contribute and begin to condemn what is wrong, then we will be able to bring freedom to our people. Hello? Yes. Hello, good evening. Yes, who is speaking, please? My name is Benjamin. I'm speaking from Nigeria. Yes, how are you, Benjamin? I'm good, sir. I, I just I want to contribute to this uh, discussion this night, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. So I have I have an experience. I want everybody to hear about my uh, my experience. Okay. I used to be in the United Kingdom for some years, and uh, while I was in the UK, I was sending my tithe. To a particular ministry in Nigeria, which the pastor was very close to me. And uh, after my departure from the UK, I returned back to Nigeria after my studies. And when I came to Nigeria, I had big challenge, uh, challenges. And uh, the first thing I did was to go to around to that pastor that was sending my tithes too from the United Kingdom. Okay. And when the man saw, the man saw me and he said, "Oh." What are you doing here? I said, I'm back to Nigeria. I have completed my program. And that presently, I need money to buy some food stuff and some few things to my house because I had nothing to start with. And the, the man just went ahead and said, I don't know why you should come back. Why did you come back? See, I have no, I don't think I have business with you. Wow. I have no money I can give you. That I am very, very serious. I don't have anything for you, not even a dime. Wow. That he just started, he just started a car importation business from Republic of Benin, and uh, he doesn't think he can accommodate anything for me. I was like, but all the while, sir, for more than a year, I've been sending my tithes to you, just money to buy food stuff into my house. You can't find it, and he locked me outside, and I quietly left that place. He, I want to tell you, he uh, loved, Doctor DSK, he, he loved you outside. That Oh yeah, he just left me outside. Abandoned me and I had to leave. I left. DSA, I left, I was highly disappointed. Wow. If not for my maturity in Christ, I would not be in church today. I wouldn't go to church again. Wow. So now, you're coming on board with all this exposure has liberated me. Um, last week or there about, for the first time in my life, I had to look back to my to my old church in the village and I sent some money hundreds and some thousands of naira for the first time to demonstrate what that what that church in Texas what they did I sent it quietly to uh, somebody in the local church that they should put a thousand naira each in the envelope and give to all the widows that we have in the church they said the whole city turned at God so what I'm saying right here is that there are so many people in the village, apart from our background, that we need to touch. You need to touch. This has never happened in that church since the foundation of the church. For the first time that they will go to church, and instead of church receiving money from them, church was now giving money to them for the first time. 
and I am liberated. I am very happy. Please keep on doing this. We will keep doing our own part. Nigeria must be liberated, and Nigerians will be liberated. Thank you, DSC. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so very much. Wow, 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 wow. Amazing. Well, you know, this is um, appalling. Somebody, a church who have been sending money to for a whole year, tight, every month. Now you came and said, please help me. I don't even have food to eat. And now... Hello? 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 Yes, sir. Who is calling from where? Uh, it is Ono JJ. There's no JJ voice recordings from uh, Texas. Uh, hello, sir. Welcome. Yes. DSA, I want to personally thank you so much for the good work you are doing. Hmm. I, without, I, don't, I don't want to waste much of your time. I will just get straight to the point. Yes, sir. In short, today I was, I was shocked to my bone marrow. I was confused. So hear yeah, what uh, the geo was saying. I couldn't believe my eyes. Mm. I couldn't believe my eyes. I called my wife and I called her to come and see. She was shocked. The extent to which these people have gone in trying to instill fear on the minds of the, the people, I can't believe it. And many people have this been deceived, have been deceived thinking Pastor Debo is totally different. I'm telling you, I thought this man was different, but from what I've seen, this man is worse than the one of uh, Winner Chappelle. Wow. He has a way of speaking softly to the people. But from what I have seen right now, it shows that the platform, your message, and that of Daddy Freeze is gaining ground in Nigeria. I remember... The, uh, the, the son said that uh, the, because of what that the priest said, that the tithe has increased by 30%. But this clearly showed that, that the priest that what you are doing is gaining ground in Nigeria. People are becoming aware of the danger. They used to say that if you don't pay your tithe, force will be upon you, which is Malaka. But right now, if any single member does not pay, force will be on the entire member of the congregation. Hmm. I don't know what they are get, where they are getting that from. Who would have the example he showed where he said about Akai? That one has nothing to do with the, the tithe. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the tithe. That's, I'm surprised that, that this man, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what they are doing. I don't want, like I said, I don't want to take most of your time. I really want to thank you for the good work you are doing. May God bless you. This Nigeria project is a must. Everybody must sensitize our people. Our people have to be liberated. The truth has to be said. I want to congratulate you, to encourage you that we are praying for you. We are behind you in our prayer. Whatever it takes, we are there to support you. Wow. Sir, may God bless you real good. We always keep praying for you. But, sir... Before I go, I want to ask a, a question. One question, it does not have nothing to do with it today's topic. Okay. I don't know when I have the opportunity to ask it. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, when I was in Nigeria, I got baptized in the uh, Winner Chapel. Then they just put us in water and they brought us out. We don't know anything. But now that I have known the truth, I have seen the truth, I want to ask if it is right for me to go and baptize again or not. Oh yeah, if it's coming out of your conviction, if you believe okay, that it's coming out of my conviction, I can do it again. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you so much, sir. May God bless you. Thank you, thank you so much. All right, bless All us. Right, bye -bye. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow! This is unbelievable, and uh, we need to open our mouths and begin to set our people free in the guys. We need to begin to, you know, open the eyes of the people and tell them the truth. And for those of you who don't know these books that you are seeing here, these are my books. And this, and those are the ways you could get them. You could get them in Nigeria. You could get them in on Amazon. You could read them for free if you want on Kindle Amazon. 
So you could read them for free if you don't have the money, but you have to register for Amazon. That's not buying the book. That's not paying for the book. That's just being able to have access to read the book for free. And um, if you are interested in that, some of these books will help you, set you free, open your mind and, you know, remove all the wrong doctrines and the lies that have been put in your head. And all of us need to detox from all these things. And, and if you don't, if you cannot buy book or read book, go and listen to the video. We have videos on, um, on YouTube and the YouTube page is Sunday at Elijah Official. Sunday at the Ledger Official on Facebook I am on YouTube. Hello? Hello? Yes. Hello, good evening, dear sir. Is that Peter from uh, Belgium? <laughs> yeah, Peter from Belgium. How are you, sir? Good evening, dear sir. Yeah. I'm very fine. Thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you for coming to the platform again. Because I know that you, you, uh, you said you will come back. And... Uh, I just want to thank you for the SMT that just finished a couple of uh, hours ago. So you were able to follow you, it. You were able to follow, yeah, right? I was even at my work too. I used my just to hear the. I put my earpiece on my ear and uh, just to hear. But I was not able to see the video because I'm working. I was really happy on Friday. I think it's on Friday or Thursday when uh, there was explanation. Explanation from uh, the Nigeria project, yeah. the analysis from the sixth geopolitical zone in Nigeria. I was so blessed. I feel in my spirit that it already happened. Amen. I, I was just so I, I was just so happy because the, even my colleague, there are white people. They don't even know why I'm, I was happy. I was just happy that they, I don't know that I I, I can't even uh, I don't say think that. There would be a something like this, or even the explanation, the analysis, the everything was so, was so like it was already there. I just want to see it. I want, I already feel it. I just want to see it real. So I just want to thank you for who you are, for the, for for the uh, the strength, the wisdom, the power, the the the, the motivation, the, the the wisdom, the gift that you have. I don't know. I I, I cannot qualify. I cannot qualify. I'm so very happy and uh, that I'm among this family. I'm so very happy. I'm looking forward to be part more and more and more and more. And it has changed my life very, very, very well. And people around me, I just want to say uh, for today, speak about today, uh, about today's topic. I'm so happy that you are back. And I'm so happy for today's message is, is a bomb explosion again, as usual. And uh, I think... They say the message you're teaching and this platform is going far. Because today, this afternoon, I was listening to uh, somebody sent a uh, message, uh, the same platform from my state, Edo State, a lady, a woman, a, a woman and a, and a man. They were doing the same. They were doing the same thing. I I, I share it too as well because I just wanted to say somebody shared my, my Facebook. So. I listen, I was listening to what they were saying. They were talking about like, enlightening the people as well. So people have already hijacked this platform in a good way. People are not bold. This, this was a woman. I, I, she's on my Facebook now. I share it as well. So they were talking about this type of a thing. This woman, uh, one pastor in Nigeria, in Lagos, one woman, the way he was insulting that the phrase, a bad thing and all that stuff, because I, I saw it too as well. So I'm really very, very happy because... It's opened our eyes. Even when I went to UK last Easter period, this last Easter, my family, friends, there, everybody is watching you. They are so happy. People are so... I mean, it's going far. Because the, the problem is people have been into this system for a very long time. People have been into this system for a very long time. So, and it's difficult for them to understand that maybe it's true or it's not true. But the good news is People are being liberated from this bondage gradually. If I can see it, I think somebody else has seen, I can see it as well. If I, if I free from this and I know the truth, I have seen the truth, I have heard the truth, I believe some other person in Nigeria have already, we have been going gradually. But my plea is I just want God to give you the strength to continue. 
Because even the last week when we were teaching the SMT, where there was no much of this type of this platform, I was really feeling somehow like, oh, it's like something is out of me. Something is not there anymore. Like, I really want to see that you come back because I know that it has been helping his pain and he has helping other people as well. And I just want to encourage you more, please, sir, to continue, to continue exposing these people. They are being a, a, a viral, a viral to our people. They have turned our economic upside down, and people don't think about the consequence. What they have done to our people, they don't think about it at all. They don't know that they have crippled our economy, they have make our people to be sick, depressed, to be wicked, to be selfish. So many things have gone wrong. And uh, according to our sister in America, I think it's Shola or so, when she was talking about the people in the black, I know there will be people, because there are some people that want to be like Adeboye. They are inspired to, 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 to be Daddy Jill as well. They will don't want to give up. There are people that have gone through the their ministry school, uh, their uh, ministerial school, they have gone to their pastoral school. They want to be like that. They want to fight back because they are dreaming. Many frost stars, they have been to pastoral ministry. They want to be the same. So it will be difficult. I want to show you it will be difficult for people to, some people to understand. But I think by the special grace of God, God will deliver us in the mighty name of Jesus. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so very much. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you. So he said he has been missing. Like he has been missing something because <laughs> yeah, somebody else is writing it there here that it is like something was missing on Facebook without us coming on every day like I was coming. But um, we needed to do HMT and um, that was also necessary to prepare people for the journey, for the change in Africa, in Nigeria. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Who is calling from where? I'm calling from the uh, UK. I'm Destiny. Destiny. How are you, sir? I'm fine, sir. I just want to say thank you, sir, for this very, very beautiful message you, you've been passing to all of us. Yes. More especially, sir, I just want to congratulate you for the courage and the confidence, uh, the confidence you have to be able to speak to these people because uh, a lot of people have heard of them. They feel they are a that nobody can talk to them. But because of the glory that the anointing of God upon your life are giving you the mantle to carry on that spirit of boldness, I just thank God and uh, the God will come to uh, give you the courage and give you the enablement to expose them so that your, your, the, the children of God will be liberated and be set free. Because a lot of people have been in darkness for years, but yet when you talk to some people, they don't want to believe. But the Bible says the truth will always set all of us free. And that is true that you are, you are trying to bring to, to the children of God. I just thank God for your life and may God continue to strengthen you, sir. Thank you very I just started, much. I just started following you, Facebook, but I know with this uh, information and with this exposure, I, I think it will draw me closer also. I know uh, a title is just, I mean, a pastor and others is just a title, but your relationship with God is what matters. Yes. May God continue to, may God continue to uh, enrich you and give you more wisdom, more knowledge and understanding in Jesus' name. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much. Okay, sir. Have a wonderful evening. Blessings. Now, yeah, so for people who are saying they were missing us, that we were not coming on, I was not coming on on daily broadcast, and that something was missing on Facebook as if something is not all right. Well, you know, the training also is needed, you know, HMT. Yeah, that's more intensive training, and then we had the anniversary, and yeah. So, yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. This is Olari Waji, sir. Yes. How are you, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, good job, sir. Thank you for the video that you showed today, and I also want to thank you for the for the ancient teaching. I'll be able to listen to the to the message. Good. Thank you so much. Good. I just want to tell you, sir, that the video that you showed today that give me a proof what happened in 2016, that Pastor Adeboye is the one that is the one that teach all his pastor to do people because there is a particular woman. Is a she's a pastor, 
and in Nondo town. I be, uh, it's not that I know him somewhere. I, I began to, to a church when I was in Nondo town. And when I came to the United States, this woman, she'd been calling me, telling me that I should come and buy a house. I do this. And the video that she sent to me, and the, the photos of the building, the house, I don't like it. And recently, in 2016, she told me that I should come and buy a land, and she said 1.6 million. And my wife said, why land is going to be 1.6 million in Nondo? Why do you want to do that? I said, this woman, she's a woman of God. She can't lie. And unfortunately, I told her that I want my brother to come and check to see if it is the, the location and the area. And she said, no, I want to build the house for you. I don't want your family to know. I want to do this and that. And I said, ah. my wife said, why this woman want to do this? How can you buy a land and send money to her to build her without the concept of your family? That I, I shouldn't agree with that, uh, that statement. So I called my brother to go and see her. Do you know this woman insult my brother and said, I am a stupid person that she want to help me? That she wants to help me to build it, that she don't know that I'm a very, that I'm a, a work kind so much. She begins to insult me and do all kind of that. Say, she, if not that she needs money. So this video showed me that Adeboye, Baba, I'm sorry to say that, sir, because you are already teaching not to insult anybody, but I'm so sorry. But this, because I was so hungry when I was look, I was, I was watching and hear what Baba Gio is talking about tithe and said if single person is not paid tithe in the church, that there's a cost. That's that RCCG, that's Redeem Camp in Lagos. Is there everybody pay tight in, in, inside that church? <laughs> that is manipulator. <laughs> so that come to my mind that, and I call my wife, I said, you, do you see that this man is the one that teach most of his pastor to steal him, to do people? And if not God that, that helped me, that I didn't send the money, because I want to send the money, I have the money. We want to send the money to this woman to buy the land and help us to, to start it, do the project. And my brother told me that this woman, she didn't show him any land. And she just said, I just get out of my house. Don't come. I want to help your brother. I said, how can you say you want to help somebody? I'm his brother. And he's my elder brother. I said, why don't you want me to know about this thing? Why do you go angry? Why do you? And that, this is how I stopped calling this woman. And for the for going to two years now, this woman never called me back again because she knows that I know the truth. And thank God that I come. So when I come to your platform and I, I thank God for my, my friend that introduced me to this platform, since that time, God has been liberating me. And even the church I'm going, I'll be a, a, a something else in that church, in, inside that church. So thank you so much, sir. And I really appreciate you for this video. The Lord will continue to strengthen you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank and you. and I think it's a wonderful thing that you are speaking out and you are sharing your experience with us so that we will also know what is happening in real, in real times. And I think that is the truth that the brother said because, you know, the pastor, the way he's preaching like this to his pastors and his pastors are hearing this, this manipulation, it means they too will be manipulating. He's the one teaching them manipulation. Hello? Hello, sir. Hello, yes. sir. Yes. Good evening, sir. Yes, sir. Who is calling, please? This is Joseph from Nigeria, Lagos, Nigeria. Oh, that's our Joseph. Yes, sir. Our own Joseph. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for calling. I back. really enjoyed. I really enjoyed today's message. <laughs> I really enjoyed it, and everything you said today was was the. They were all true. Hmm. Very true. Hello. Mr. Stite, they collect 70%. Hello, sir. Yes, we are, are you hearing me. Very well. Hello, sir. I'm hearing you yes. very well. It's Minister Stite. On every Minister Stite, they collect 70%. The congregation is 77.5%. There was a day I challenged a pastor, and I said, even if we are to go by this tithe, what the Bible requested was tithe, was tithe of the tithe. The next thing he replied to me was that this is an internal arrangement. I know <laughs> it's all about money. The one you said where Baba Adeboye said, if you don't, if you don't, Peter, you make heaven. I have the book. Tomorrow, I will snap it and send it. I have the book. 
Wow. Yes, sir. The one you said. I have. I bought the book a long time. I have the book where he said, "If you don't pay tight, you will not make heaven." I have it. Hmm. I have it. I'm a member. I'm a. I'm a stout member. But not too long ago, I pulled out. Hello. I pulled out because I was no more. Hello, sir. You pull out of the church. Are you with me, sir? Yes, sir. Not too long, long ago, I pulled out out of the. I just told them, I don't want, because I'm, I'm a minister there. I'm an assistant pastor there. But I just said, enough is enough. I can't continue to remain in silence, to suffer in silence. I pulled and I said, enough. And I said, I am no more because I've seen everything. It's all about money, money, money. Even when we go to give reports, they are not interested in how many members you have. What they, what they just want to see is the figure. If the figure is decreasing, the pastor will receive query. I was there when we were in the minister's conference where we were told if they get to know that a pastor does not pay tight, he will be expelled. I was there, not that I was told. All these things that you are saying, they are very true. And that is why a lot of young pastors are looking up to these to this babas in the faith. And once you challenge them, you become the enemy. Just like many of them are now my enemy because of what I post on my page. A lot of them, have got, they are going against me now. They are fighting me. They are quarreling with me. A lot of them don't even pick my calls again. A lot of them don't, don't even like my post again. A lot of them are now deleting me off their page because of what I post on Facebook. All what you've been saying are true. And when they challenged me, I said, if DSA is wrong, that means Jesus too was wrong. <laughs> Jesus had to stand up against the religious leaders. Yep. He stood up against them and he challenged them. If he didn't challenge them, how would we know that those guys were wrong? Paul wrote to Timothy. He told him. And today we are reading letter. He said, be careful, be wary. Be careful of Emmanuel and Philetus because of their cancerous messages. It all did. Yeah. So if Paul never wrote that letter that we are writing, we are reading now, how would we have known that Emmanuel and Philetus, when, when they were giving messages that were damaging people? If these things are not coming out, a lot of people, they are living in fear. Yeah. The bondage of fear has held a lot of people down. So these messages that you are turning out is like liberation to a lot of people. It's just the very few ones that are benefiting or they are aspiring to benefit that will only counter you. But the many people that are suffering from the bondage of fear, they know that they've been liberated. They know already. So all you've been saying are very correct. All they do is because of money. Sir, is money. They are only building their financial empire. That is what is happening. Church in Nigeria has become business. Business and pure business. That's why you see them position their children in juicy positions, in juicy offices, so that in one way or the other, they will still be um, within the corridors of power. I, I, I told the guy, I said, Renabonka and Denova. Renabonka has children. He has children, he has men, he has ladies in his family. But he handed over to a guy that he didn't know from Adam. The guy, their path crossed, and God told him, this is the guy that will, that will succeed you. And yet to see them look for somebody that is not known, that God will lead them to and say, this is the guy that you will hand over to. That is why the church in Nigeria has become padi padi. If you are able to erect a brick, a, a gigantic uh, building as a church, before you do anything, they will move you that do the only work. That labored to do it, they will not bring their own party into that place because of what they will stand to benefit. It has been party to party. If you can play the politics right, I am telling you, a fairly redeemed, you will rise to the top. If you can play the politics right, it's about money, it's about honorarium. Once you get your people in just two places, they keep inviting you to come and minister because they know that yes, they will get something. So that has been the way church is being run in Nigeria. I know that is going on. They will tax our, our offering. 
They will tax the children offering. They will tax our Thanksgiving offering. They will tax um, even the, the, the workers offering. They will tax the Sunday school offering. They will tax every... Hello? A, a treasurer. So I, I know what I'm talking about. They tax all... Hello, hello sir? Yeah, they tax... Hello, sir? Yes. Almost every offerings, mm. almost all the offerings, Thanksgiving, um, uh, ministers of ministers' tithes, Every time we go, offering. Every time, offering, 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 offering. Even in the this, in the three by three kilometers that, 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 that they are building, every parish is an being taxed. Of legs, of legs. Every parish is now to give a percentage to Redeemer's University now, as I'm talking to you. There is a percentage of every offering you collect every month. There is a percentage that goes to Redeemer's University now, as I'm talking to you now. He's getting it just not too, 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 too long, long ago. The thing they get worse yes, now. He's getting worse now. Sir? I said the thing. It they is. Get. It is. If we, if Baba Debo is doing birthday, every parish must give a gift. Every parish, if you don't give gifts, you contribute 20,000 naira. Every parish, and I mean it, every parish. On 1st of January, every parish must give a gift. So everybody must contribute. If we don't contribute, they will tax the, the church itself. They go to the post of itself. When it's time for the church, when they need their leads, they will tell the pastor, go and meet your members. But when the members have needs, there is no one to meet. They will tell you the church does not have money. That is what they, they tell us every time. I remember a time a woman went through CCS. We had to pull 35,000 naira out of the church force. When we went for auditing, we were told to return the money back. So the pastor and I had to pay the m m money. But when one of the, the senior pastor's wife's father died, we were all taxed. 20, 20 percent. Every parish is under the area was all taxed. And I told the pastor, and I said, for the living, you deny the person, but for somebody that is dead, you are asking us. And I said, which is all this arrangement? What is all this arrangement? And the pastor is always, you know, because of his uh, position, he always wants to progress his position. He's so speechless, he's so, he's so handicapped, he doesn't know what, what to do. So anytime I go to him, I always challenge him. I said, the church is struggling. If you want to pay away our rights, we, need, we have to tax ourselves. And I asked him, all these monies that they are collecting from, from us, where are they, are they going? He said, to the, to, to the national owner. So every money that we contribute, more than 70% leaves the parish. That is why most of the parishes are dying now. That is the present state, except you have very rich people in the parishes. Most of the parishes are dying now because a lot of their funds are being siphoned away. So that is the state of things now. Hello, sir. Yeah, it's sad, it's sad, it's sad. So that, that, is, that, is, that is the state of things. They, Yes. He said they are taxing the people. Taxing the church. Taxing the church. Okay, thank you so much, Joseph. Yeah, I think he told us enough. He's from inside and he's calling from Nigeria. So he know what he knows what is going on there. And um it's so sad. It is uh it's um, unbelievable. It's tragic that uh, this kind of thing is happening but somebody needed to talk about it and i'm sorry i have to do what i need to do hello hello sir hello yes sir hello who is calling from where <laughs> Doctor DSA. yes sir good afternoon sir afternoon i'm calling from the united states of america Yes, sir. But we, and, um, yes. Um, I think uh, I feel uh, it's an honor to to talk on this program hmm. and uh, to be part of what you're trying to do in Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, and when you first came to the United States, I think some 15, 16 years ago. I'm not very sure. Yeah. Certainly around 2004, 2005. That's right. I think. Yeah. I met you, you know me very well, but I'm not going to tell you who I am right now. Oh, okay, okay. That's, that's <laughs> I met you, you know me very well. Wow. <laughs> but I'm not, I don't want to divulge this over the phone right now. Okay, okay. No but um, 
I have, I've just been following you lately for the past, past three months, and um, I, I hate to miss any of your program, but I do miss it because of work. Yeah, but you, anytime I'm able to... You could also go to YouTube. Anytime. Yes, I do go, yes. I watch all of your, all of your programs, but I need to call in on live, um, live programs like this. It's not always possible for me. Yeah. But I'm, I just said, um, I, well, let me try today. I had called and uh, I've been listening to your these programs all day. I mean, since the past hour and, yeah. hour and a half or two hours ago. Yes. And um, and um, I, what I just want people to understand is this. Your message has not changed. From the first day that I knew you, when you came to America, and up till now, your message has not changed. Thank God, though. Make you tell them, oh, because they are saying it is because of something. I want to come to Nigeria. I want to come and to show something. Tell them, since you know me since 16 years have, ago. They don't have any idea. They do not have any idea that your message has not changed. So this is not something that just came out of it. What you did just is not just coming out of the air. Now. You have no any ulterior motive, but to do the same thing that you do did in Ukraine, yes. to do it in America, in Nigeria. Yeah. My heart is so sore. I wait for my country every day, sir. Hmm. Hmm. Every day, my wife will tell me, "Look, you know, you're just gonna give yourself a heart attack." Hmm. But I know we have to do some. We can. We cannot continue to say that. Look, there's nothing we can do. Yeah. We we cannot continue. Somebody has got to stand up. Some people have got to do things. Yeah. And now we are finding now, DSA, that people in Nigeria are beginning to understand. Ah. And there are people that are willing to do the same thing that you are doing. Amen. But one thing I would want you to know, sir, is that as you plan this, I want to, from time to time, I may email people. You could compile a list of people that you think that you may be able to work with in Nigeria. Yes. There are pastors now in that country that are saying the same thing that you are saying. Beautiful. There is a one, one pastor, again, who is a, is a pastor that I know very well. He knows me very well. And he's, been, he's just recently in, uh, in, Amer in America with it for a program just last week or two weeks ago. Pastor Adeyemi, he, he came from Nigeria. Is this Sam Adeyemi? Sam Adeyemi, yes. The one that came from Nigeria, I don't mean the, uh, okay. And he says something about, about the Titan, the same thing that you're saying. Yeah. And pe people were bashing him. <laughs> and he said, look, yeah, people were bashing him. Saying all kind of things about him. He said, well, you know what? He said, I've done the same thing and I'm guilty of it. Hmm. But I have found out now that I've been wrong, mm. and I'm trying to change. Mm. This same, same thing that we're talking, you're talking about, about fighting today. And I know this is not the first time you're preaching this stuff. Yeah. You know? So, there are people in Nigeria that you will partner with. I want you to put that in mind. Okay. That, that is, is important. I mean, men of God. Yes. That are, that are truly, truly want to see our country prosper that truly want to see a change that are patriotic to our country and know that without people getting up and put and coming together we will never make any progress okay yeah so there are a lot of people even as when pastor bakari you yeah. know him the politician that around them he's one of the people that 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 i respect so much yeah and i in, in light of in light of this i would like you to be having those people yeah that are in high places and that are, that are men of god yeah that you eventually partner with right so we have to change nigeria yeah we have to change nigeria I've, I've been in america all my life you know i've been in america for a long time most of my adult life i've spent in america wow and to god yes i have you know 
You know, at the, at the appropriate time, I would divulge it myself to you. You know me very well. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> I'm close to one of your best friends in America. Wow. I am not going to miss me. Okay. 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 And, 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 um, and then when, when, you know, I, I, sometimes I do write blogs. I write blogs on, on NigeriaWorld.com. You can see. If you check, um, uh, you probably will see my uh, my blog. But right now, I'm not ready to say my name uh, on this on the program now. Yeah. You know who I am. Yeah. How have you said that, sir? Sir? I mean, I I I will I how you well, how you will laugh, you know, and I will talk about her. I I heard that they were they are waiting for me. They said, look, people like people look look at where America is today, sir. I want people to see what Martin Luther King did for this country. Yeah. What Martin Luther King did for America today. We are all enjoying it. Even those of us that came from Africa. We are all enjoying what he did for America. For, for, for black people in America. If you nobody is ready to stand up and speak, the change will not come. Mm. So I was listening to him, uh, to, to another uh, former senator in Nigeria, a Muslim man, who was saying that I am reborn, I am born again, and that I cannot continue to live the life that I'm living as a, as a, as a public figure. I'm not saying the right thing. That our country need people to stand up and begin to do the right thing. Yeah. Our leaders and our, our senators, they say that, and then they said, why are you doing this now? I said, well, because I've looked at it, looked at it. And then he said that my, 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 my heart is hurting, knowing that things that I've done in the past is not helping generations, is not helping, helping our future children. And Bro. that he doesn't want to be part of that anymore. He said, I'm born again now. Bro, your time is up. This is big. Your time is so? up. Your time is up today. Call back tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, so, sir. Uh, I should... I could come back tomorrow. Yes, sir. All right. Yeah, people have bought him for Nigeria. And, uh, yeah, and uh, so let us all, uh, you know, begin to speak out and begin to illuminate our people and bring the light to them. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Hello, good evening, uh, VSA. Oh, is that uh, Abby? Yeah, this is Abby, sir. Good evening, sir. How are you today? I'm fine, sir. Um, I've got a few things to say. I've got testimony. Um, I just want to say thank you for the just concluded HMT. Good. Um, it was mind blowing. Yeah. What did you say, sir? I said you were watching it, eh? Yeah, I was often none. I was often none, but I, I was able to watch uh, most of them. Um, and also, um, I just want to sing a song. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, I know this yeah. is, it, it's not a moment, everybody is so hot with this message, but I just want to sing a song. And with this I song, want I to sing a song. Do, um, no, why don't you sing the song in the end? You, let's, okay. hear the, let's hear the testimony. Okay, so the, the testimony is this. Uh, um, whilst I was listening to your um, HNC, yes. and I listened to this um, brother's message, um, um, Pastor Victor, yes. and I listened to the message, you mean doctor, I just felt, doc, doctor, sir? Vic, doctor Victor. Is it Doctor? Yes. Yeah, okay, Doctor Victor. The, yes. um, is it Wellington, his surname? Ah, okay, right. that's Pastor, that's Pastor, yeah, Pastor Victor. I heard the one that was given a testimony about RCCG. Oh, yeah, from France, yes. From France. Yes. So I was listening to it, but I just felt that only anger in me. But this message, this particular clip that he was talking about, is something that needs to be heard everywhere. It needs to be heard everywhere. I just couldn't wait. And I was now looking for how to, you know, how to match those, you know, how to cut it, you know, which is not something that I do every time. And the, the message was so much, it was like about three hours and thereabouts. And I was thinking three hours, people will not listen to three hours and all that. And, you know, so it took me like almost 24 hours. At the long run, I got through to it and I was able to share it. 
The testimony is not the fact that I was able to share it because I know everybody. I need to see my inbox. I was like, okay, because I was thinking, you are going to, I'm a bad person anyway, according to them, which I'm always, I'm even enjoying the moment of being called a bad person. So I, that's what I was expecting. But the liberating thing there was that the message of three hours, 30, I think three hours of three hours, 30 minutes. Can you hear me, sir?